Hello, everybody. Oh, can you hear me? Wireframe, wireframe, OK. And um, I'm Daniele De Luca. It's uh, Luigi Verri. We are from Cineca in Italy. And uh, we want to introduce you um, back to the Middle Ages, <coughs> which is a blend for web prototype that we like to call a point and click adventure game. So we are uh, from Cineca. Is, uh, Cineca is a main Itali Italian supercomputing facility uh, hosting virtual. Uh, Hosting machine use it to super calculation uh, re for research industries uh, like uh, weather forecast and um, other calculation. Chineca Visit is a small department uh, made by uh, with uh, I don't know we are like six or seven persons inside all, the whole uh, Chineca. Focus on computer graphics, so scientific visualization and um, more recently uh, cultural heritage, heritage stuff. Uh, real time or pre rendered, we've made some uh, short movies and some other stuff. Today, we want to introduce this uh, game, uh, it's a prototype, and it's an educational third person um, adventure game. We want to focus on um, online PC um, browser based game, so that works without any plugins or without any installation, and that is uh, also compatible with mobile. Uh, in this game, you play the role of uh, Guido, which is a typical medieval name uh, in uh, medieval Bologna, which is our city in Italy. Uh, he, he is a merchant uh, apprentice in the um, medieval period in Bologna, and with a, uh, uh, yeah, an encounter a ghost, he encounters a ghost that uh, creates a time vortex for uh, some reason, and um, yeah, um, Widow finds himself in a Roman Bologna. So he had to solve quests and uh, puzzles to go back to the Middle Ages mm, and get back home, of course. These are some people involved. I want uh, to thank everybody because uh, the support and the work that they are doing, uh, they have do for this prototype. And we want to share with you about the the path, the uh, difficulties, and the technology that we used uh, to make this game. Of course, we are, um, are a Blender-based uh, yeah, studio that uses uh, Blender for modeling and, and real-time or pre-rendered animation. So we thought we, we could use Blender too for this, uh, in particular for modeling. But the community gave us a uh, big help because uh, we are not capable of uh, uh, rigging stuff or uh, make so much uh, you know, complex things. So uh, we can borrow models from uh, BlendSwap or uh, use the CG Cookie Flex Rig, which I will introduce later, uh, to uh, use in our project. Uh, also, this is a prototype of a web app. But um, with no plugin installation, we've tried with Blender Game Engine, we tried Barster, uh, or uh, also WebGL 3.js. Um, but we find we quite comfortable with Blend for Web because it's mm, <clears throat> much more easier for us. Uh, and this is our experience, so I want to share it to you. Blend for Web has the JavaScript part that allows you to do everything that you can do in a, three, in a browser, but in 3D. You can pick object, move, create, uh, I don't know, uh, we'll see later something, create um, divs, the ID, or uh, um, interaction, and anything. Uh, what else? Yeah, you have to do this with Blend for Web APIs, or a lot of math, depends on your uh, problems. And um, the inventory system and conversation engine uh, of this particular game are borrowed for, uh, from another website named This Could Be Better, but uh, isn't good enough. So uh, we extended for our purpose to achieve our, uh, our, our goals. Uh, we'll see that later. But for the Blender part, I wish to nominate to, to yeah, tell you uh, something about our previous movie made in a um, uh, few years at Chineca is uh, yeah these steels down there are from the movies and this is the character that shows you what happened in uh, what happened in uh, Bologna through centuries so the evolution of the city is in the city museum and we have uh, done most 
of the 3D modeling. Other are coming from some project, uh, some uh, uh, research studies. And we use this to explain how Bologna uh, is um, uh, evolved through centuries. So um, we have these models. We can readapt because they are high polys. We can readapt them for real time. And uh, for example, uh, this uh, still down there is a Roman. Wait, wait. Is a Roman um, Bologna, and we grab some models, re-elaborated for real time, and create an asset for uh, the game, uh, just an environment with the, uh, in the Brentford web engine. So uh, this is a web browser. I can reload the page. It reloads, and uh, uh, that's just an asset. If you want to do something more, you have to do JavaScript. I'm not capable. He is. And um, you can do interaction and uh, moving uh, through, the, through the environment. Uh, OK. So there are um, other projects from the past. This is from the latest century. Uh, this is called hmm? NUME, uh, which is uh, a real-time navigation into Bologna. And these are the, some of the models which um, we re-elaborated to do the movie. So this is from uh, an ancient per this is an ancient version of this, which is the actual uh, look of a part of the prototype of the game. Uh, these are um, the new asset and the new texturing you, you see. For the character part, we dedicated uh, a lot of time experimenting, and uh, these are some animation tests. Uh, there is a model on um, the community from Blend4Web, uh, BlendSwap, sorry, uh, BlendSwap community, and it's free to use by, by CC BY license. So we can reuse and uh, optimize because it's really heavy, 50,000 uh, 50, polygons. So we have to reduce the number of the, the words, and this is my uh, wait. On the first test, uh, we haven't so many uh, skills, so the first test is like, I don't know, this, the first working test. I don't know, the, the, the head is here somewhere, you can find it. Okay. But, <coughs> but then, uh, with um, the re-rigify, uh, the re-rigging of the model, we have a um, uh, functioning character. And after that, we have to, of course, uh, bake and uh, paint on the character to, to reach the, uh, to reach an um, optimized version also for mobile. So like, he's in a steel widow. Uh, after this, we encounter the Chijikuki Flexic, which we used for other, uh, for other um, <coughs> movies, but we think that it's too uh, comfortable to work with this rig because you have infinite variation. You should try this because, um, yeah, it's open source because uh, it's a brand file with uh, so many um, plus because you have uh, triggers, you have uh, sliders, you can change the shape of the body, shape of the, um, the face, the colors, the, the dress, dress clothes, etc. Et and uh, with this thing, we could uh, reach all the non-playing characters. We could uh, populate our, our uh, real-time world. And we'll see how. Uh, but the real problem of this kind of stuff is that it's not made for real-time. And there are hundreds of bones and shapes for the rig to, mold, to move. And uh, this is a problem because uh, in WebGL, in browser, you have to keep low your bone number. Uh, around I don't know, 64 or less is better. And um, for this, we, have, we started with the Chichiku Kiflex Rig, a model a standard character, like a merchant, and then uh, applies all the ship keys and removes the, am the armature. So we have the T-Pose bones, uh, T-Pose model uh, standard with no, um, uh, with no rig at all. It's a model uh, without ship keys, uh, with only uh, one UV, UV map and uh, so we can paint and bake also the cloth on him to reach uh, you know, like 
this thing. And with the powerful um, node-based Blender render and Blender game and Blend for Web because they are mo um, similar, they are uh, yeah, mapped one with another, we can reach a decent um, shader, shading. And after this is uh, lifeless because we have no, no rig. So the second step is a rigify setup because rigify we discovered is um, um, much more comfortable to, to, uh, yeah, to play with. And uh, we can uh, replace the old rig that we have removed with rigify, generate the rig, so the character has his standard rig. But there is a problem. So we save this rigged file as uh, MPC, no plain character mercant animation. But there is a problem. Uh, he has too many bones, too. So we have to throw them all down away, um, keeping only the deformation bones. That's the one that we need to deformate the body. We don't need the shapes that um, allow the animator to move the body because uh, uh, they are plus that are um, functioning, in, functioning in Blender but not uh, comfortable to export in WebGL or in Blender for Web. So this is a second file named MPC Mercant that helps us and that is exportable. This is our production file that works in Blend for Web. You can export and have the um, steel model, but with the rig. A third step, third step, is to animate with the first file, that one dedicated to animation, with all the rigs, so the, animation, the animator is comfortable. But then, um, in a temporary file, we bake this animation only for, for the deformation bones that we uh, kept, keep in the production file. After this, um, we can append the final animation to the game, and then it works. Uh, we can choose between uh, idle animation, work animation, and uh, manage that in uh, Blend for Web. And um, there are lightweight and uh, yeah, mm, manageable through the WebGL plugin that is Web, uh, Blend for Web. So for the um, more technical part, like uh, JavaScript and stuff, I give the word to Luigi. Thank you. Okay, so in order to make the game playable on every touchscreen devices, we decided to adopt a point and click genre. As you can imagine, we have been inspired by LucasArts Monkey Island game. So let's talk about the character movement. When you click on the screen, on the 2D screen, um, the game calculates a target point uh, for the character moves. The target point is calculated starting from the point clicked on the screen with a ray projected toward uh, the, floor the floor plane, with a ray projected from the camera toward the floor plane. The speed is calculated depending on the distance, and the animation can be walk, run, or idle, depending on the speed. Here you can see a little example. To, go, to get the correct uh, quaternion rotation of Guido, again, we had to do a lot of math. Math, math, again, math. And uh, while we were looking for, a, for the right trigonometric correction, we had some issues, some funny issues, like this uh, Michael Jackson uh, moonwalk. He's so walking a, a, you can imagine, like this. You can imagine the right music here. Doing the spin. <laughs> Okay, in the game we needed an inventory to store every item Guido is collecting during uh, his adventure. So starting from a simple uh, textual inventory system, we created a graphical one, uh, working inside some HTML DIV, DIV tag, enabling the analysis of objects, their combination, their use in the 3D environment. To end all conversation, we started from a pre-existent library managing a direct dialogue with multiple choice answer. This library has been extended in order to enable complex dialogue and um, complex dialogue between the player and the, all the characters inside the scene and to enable the conclusion uh, of the dialogue by selecting a valid diction. 
We modified it to suit our needs, adding also uh, the possibility to give and receive objects, so to interact in, with the 3D scene in order to progress in the game. The camera movements, in order to explore the locations, we need also camera movements. Uh, those uh, movements are activated when the character reaches specific areas using blend for web collision sensors. Here you can see four areas with different colors uh, that enable the four different uh, camera positions. Okay, what's the feature of this project? We built a prototype to get into the framework and um, after a year of pause, of stop, we used again this uh, to develop a web uh, virtual museum. It's called Movir. And um, it's a prototype at the moment. It is uh, dynamically and procedurally built upon a database, upon a search in a database of uh, over 300,000 paintings database. It's possible to explore the buildings, the rooms, with the same point click movement that we saw for the game. And um, it works inside a browser. It can, can contain 180 paintings for each floor, and uh, every user can read the labels, can uh, have a detailed view of the opera, and the application is also, also designed to work with touch screen or smart mobile, as you can see. Uh, we also prepared some special galleries dedicated to particular um, scanned operas. All of this, thanks to blend for web uh, of course, Blender. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for attending. Do you have any question or? Uh, what is your vertex count? What's in power? Vertex count in the game. Vertex scan. Uh, count. Count. Um, ah, vertex scan. How many? So, the, um, we can open the file. <laughs> uh, the medieval level, I think I keep it low than 64,000 vertex. And every character, around 3,000. At maximum, 5,000. About 5,000. And um, for the bridge, this is more low poly, low polygon, the bridge that you saw at the beginning. So I think there is like uh, 20,000 vertexes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Anyone? I drop it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Can, can you again show the, the link of the side move here? The link of? The side with the... Uh, it's not published yet. Oh, okay. It's but a prototype. It's a prototype. It's still a prototype. Oh, okay. uh, but we need to finish the floor, and then um, the partner are yeah, uh, keeping building the database, so it's still in progress. No, I mean like the, the, the video, the video in, that you showed in the end. The video. That you showed in the, the end. Museum. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, museum. Also, also yeah, yeah, also the, the museum. museum. Also the museum. It's not at the moment uh, online. Okay. Oh, these are two yeah, different works and they are both prototype. This is from last year and the, new, the museum is uh, this year work. But uh, the museum is also prototype work in progress because we only have access uh, internally. Sorry about that, but uh, um, you can see is Movir, the name. It can be yeah, deployed uh, maybe next year. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much.